You are Caleb Noble. You are Sarah Pizzuto. You are Conky Price. And the team is here. It's exciting stuff, don't you think? I just blew in yesterday and have been watching you nice people on uh, the live stream, and it is so exciting, but, you know, this is the extra dimension being here, and I am thrilled. It's a great horse show. Yeah, it's going to be a blast. It hasn't been fun so far. It's been really fun. We've had great interviews, great people, and I'm sad to see that it's almost the end of the week. I know, but the cool thing is championship weekend is starting today, so life is good. Great classes, deep classes, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Exactly. And our friend Tony Lee has sort of um, instigated a wonderful sort of um, policy for this year's show, and he wants people to dress up like in the old days for championship weekend, so that'll be for tonight. So we've brought our bling and our things, and, and uh, so we'll be out and about yeah. with the, it'll, it'll, be it like, be. it'll be like high society has come to OKC. Exactly. And who else do we talk to? We talked to Vern, a nice man from Canada on his farm, Canabar Farm. Cool. And we also talked to Howie Schatzberg, you know, the famous guy in the center ring taking all those uh, world-class photos. And who else we talked to? Well, uh, Shane Darnell, our grand poobah of Horseshoe Wire, and um, the lovely Cutie Pie and myself were here on um, the red carpet. And we talked about, the, we did the backstory story on, on Horseshoe Wire. And it was really, we started out being cutting edge and we are maintaining our cutting edge position and it's just fine fun to share that information with uh, you know you nice folks out there yeah, and the history of it too so it's cool yeah. and uh, who else do you talk to we talked to Moretta Kennedy who is making the beautiful horse sculptures that you see all across the horse show and she has a vendor booth here at the show as well cool and we also talked to Katie Hodges who has a new position she's uh, with MHA and she's young and spry and she's looking forward to really helping out the, the uh, Morgan industry. So it's pretty exciting. So I'd say we have a pretty good show. Don't you think, guys? Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, yeah tune in, everybody. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. And uh, Conky's here, so you know the party started. <laughs> so.
the Super Convention is coming up. It's going to be a lot of fun. Don't be, miss it. Don't miss it. Um, it's February the 9th through the 13th in Boston. And I know everybody's thinking, February, Boston, what were you guys thinking? <laughs> but uh, it's a great city, a lot of wonderful things to do and see there. Uh, we've got a lot of wonderful plans. We're going to do some joint things, the Saddlebreds, the Hackneys, the United Professional Horsemen's, and the Morgan Horse Association. We're expecting about 800 people. We're going to take over the Western waterfront, so we're really excited about that. Um, and we've got some great entertainment lined up. Our keynote speaker on Friday um, is the famous racehorse trainer, uh, D. Wayne Lucas. And we have a Tony Award winning Broadway singer who's going to perform on Friday night at the awards gala. Um, so just a lot of fun, a lot of entertainment, some great things. And then some wonderful seminars. We've got a whole lineup of uh, speakers to uh, for everyone to pick and choose different tracks that they're interested in. Um, and a lot of opportunity for uh, sharing and talking about what's working in one world and what's not working and how we can learn from each other. So we're really excited about the Super Convention. I want to kind of talk a little bit about two new things that are coming up next year and actually sort of, sort of starting now. They are. Um, we have a new program called our Breed Promotion Grant. It opens on uh, October the 1st, Correct. and it closes on January the 15th, I believe. And anybody can apply for a breed promotion grant. If you're promoting the Morgan horse in any shape or form, doesn't matter if it's a parade, if it's an open house, if you've got some kind of educational program, you can apply for the breed promotion grant. All it takes is to go on, fill out the grant application, and then write a compelling presentation about what it is you're going to do. Tell us how big the audience is going to be. <coughs> Tell us what it is you're going to hope to accomplish with this with this program that you're doing. And the committee will review it. And we've set aside $10,000 for this uh, grant program. So you could get a grant for a small amount if that's all you need, or you could get a large amount if, if you have the compelling case to get it. So we're encouraging everybody. This is replacing and broadening the old equine trade show program. So if you're a Morgan club out there that has been um, traditionally applying for the equine trade show uh, grant, then you really want to pay attention because the breed promotion grant is done differently in that you apply between October 1st and January the 15th, and then they're all evaluated at one time and awarded. Uh, they're not given out as we go throughout the year. So you need to keep up with your schedule as it relates to that. But we're really excited about it. And truly, this is for any entity. Entity. Correct. Any, it's any. not for individuals. Not for individuals. But if you or and t two or three other friends want to go together and make a <laughs> make an entity uh, to put out put forward a pro you know compelling argument, then yeah, we're all about it. And we're looking for thinking outside, outside the, the box. box. Yeah, that's very true. So. Go ahead. You got one more highlight for them. One more thing. Uh, sort of along that same vein of education, we have a new homeschooling curriculum. We just got it approved. We worked with a homeschooling curriculum company called A Journey Through Learning, and they have done a tremendous amount of programs uh, across the country. And they are taking all of our horse mastership levels, all five levels, and they have converted them to a homeschooling curriculum. If you're an AMHA member, uh, the first book is free. All you have to do is drop me an email or call me, and I'll send you book one. And then we're hoping books two through five will be finished before the end of the year. Um, I've already sent out, I think, Jeff, maybe a dozen of the books, and I'm getting rave reviews. Great. The book is also available at the uh, website for A Journey Through Learning so that other people will be able to, you know, teachers or parents who mm -hmm. are wanting to use this curriculum can go to their website and, and purchase the program. So we're really excited about it. Great. Well, all that said, that's kind of what's new and what's happening currently at AMHA. But I've got to tell you, if you you don't have the opportunity to be in Oklahoma City this week, I feel bad for you. <laughs> because there is one tremendous horse show going mm. on around here. The excitement level is like, I haven't mm -hmm. felt it like this in years. I mean, it's it's pretty special. It's giving me goosebumps this year, guys. So uh, if you don't have the opportunity to be here, make sure you catch us on live streaming. So thanks much. Thanks much.
We're here with Meredith Kennedy, who makes beautiful horse sculptures. Tell us a little bit about your business. Um, I mostly do bronze sculpture, and I specialize in portraits of horses and their people. I uh, do a lot of dogs also, so um, that's, that's a lot of what I do. And how did you get involved in this business? Um, well, I was always artistic, and um, I worked in barns um, through my teens and, and 20s, um, and a lot of Morgan barns, and um, I was always artistic, so I would paint and draw, and then I was asked to do a sculpture, and I said, sure. And um, so I took, I took my first sculpture to a foundry, and they offered me a job, and I worked there for a few years and really learned the process, so, um, and that's how I got involved. Did you have any mentors or anybody that helped you along? Um, yeah, I had, at the foundry, I worked with several great artists who took me under wing and, you know, gave me a lot of help and advice, so yeah. Um, and tell us about the process. How long does it take you to make the sculptures, and how do you go about doing it? Well, it really depends on the piece. Some pieces are simple and small. Some are larger and more complicated. Um, but, you know, it can be a couple months to, you know, several months. Um, and uh, it, it involves, I sculpt in clay. I make a mold over the clay. Um, I have, then I make a wax version, which I pour wax into that mold. That goes to the foundry, and they make another mold of ceramic. They fire that, and then they pour the bronze into that shell, and they give me back the raw metal, which I do the finishing work on. And you were behind the medallion that's here. What inspired you to make that piece? Um, I think somewhat for the trophy um, that's given out at Nationals, the plaque. Um, I was inspired somewhat by that. I um, wanted to do my own version, and, um, and so that's how it happened. Now, for any of our viewers or anyone that's here and want a sculpture, um, how do they bring you their ideas, and how do you then make it into a piece? Um, well, uh, you know, I work from a lot of photographs, and um, we work together. Um, having been involved for so long, I kind of tend to like the, the photos they like, too. Um, and so we, we can shoot for an, um, a specific image in sculpture. And why do you love the Morgan horse, and why do you like to sculpt them? Um, well, um, I, I grew up with Morgans. Uh, actually, I went to school um, in Crixton, Minnesota, and Lyle Wick was the instructor there. And um, he uh, introduced me to Morgans, and I fell in love there, especially Lee with a, a horse named Willamore Spitfire. Um, and uh, it went from there. I worked at Tanglewood in Minnesota under Pierre Loisel. I was with Andy Marlette for a few years, um, and Bob and Mary uh, at the River's Edge in Colorado, um, a few places. So I just, you know, I really love the breed, and, and I have one of my own. And um, my niece just showed here, she won uh, the 13 and under Western Pleasure. So, um, and she goes again tonight, so I'm excited about that. Well, thank you so much for speaking with us. You're welcome, thank you. Mathis Brothers has something for everyone, no matter where you're at in life. Whether you're moving to college, starting a family, or when you finally build that dream home, you'll find the complete range of price points and styles and in every category. Many of our customers are second and third generation because the relationship we build with you and your family lasts a lifetime. The largest selection, the best value, from our family to yours, for over 50 years. Only at Mathis Brothers, guaranteed.
feel like Damon knows the area so well. Damon is very connected with his community. He likes to travel around and get to know people in different landmarks and different places so he can forecast better. As I was listening to him, it was right there where he was saying, he can tell you exactly what street, what store, what restaurant that it's at. Places I've never heard of and he talks about it like he's been there. We know what's coming. We trust what he's saying. I can tell exactly what's going on to the minute. He's going to keep all of us safe and that means more to me than anything else. Everyone probably who has horses in some capacity experiences symptoms of colic. The determining factor is getting to the horse quick enough and Nightwatch gives us the time to make an earlier intervention than we would have otherwise had. Horses do not like to show signs of weaknesses. So a lot of times when they start having sort of distress, what you're gonna see isn't behavioral, it's gonna be more of vital signs. Your heart rate's gonna get elevated, your respiratory rate's gonna get elevated, but they're not necessarily going to show outward physical signs of distress until it's very far along. As a, a full-time mom, as a full-time career woman, as an amateur rider, I have a lot of things to worry about. So I'm sitting here in my office doing my job, thinking about a million different things and knowing that if something went wrong, I would get a message saying something was wrong and then I could act on it. The world is going mobile every day and being able to have something in your pocket that can relieve you of a certain amount of stress worrying about your horses at home is huge. This is where technology has finally caught up to uh, what we need to properly assess and evaluate these horses on a day-to-day -day basis. And uh, now I think this is another set of eyes when we cannot be there, whether we're on the road showing, and I think it has a bright future. I've thought about a million different scenarios. And initially I thought, oh, maybe it'll appeal to this faction, a breeding operation, or to a training barn, or to an amateur owner trainer. I can't see who it wouldn't help. It's a lifesaver, is how I would describe it to someone. Yes, it's an equine distress monitor. It's a lifesaver. I'm here with Shane Darnell and Conky Price. I'm Caleb Noble, and we're going to talk a little bit about what Horse Show Wire is, a little history and a little background, and what we're up to these days. So, Shane, uh, tell me a little bit about your inspiration for Horse Show Wire. Um, in 2010, 2011, I uh, came up with the idea to start to do e-blasts. Uh, we were doing them with uh, the company I worked for during the day, and um, um, I came up with the idea then and established the e-blast for the Morgans and uh, came up with the, uh, the name Horseshoe Wire and uh, that's how we got started. And so what happened after that? You did the e-blast and then uh, you started an e-magazine and did start doing horseshoe coverage. So tell me how you kind of transitioned to those things. So yeah, I think uh, you and I started to do gate interviews at New England mm -hmm. and, uh, and then we did it at uh, Oklahoma, I think it was in 2012. And uh, as the champions were coming out of the gate, um, we interviewed them, and then we put it into the e-magazine. Um, in fact, uh, USCF chased us down at New England, asking us not to interview the winners as they came out of the gate because they'd not been uh, shoes had not been measured yet, our feet had not been measured, and uh, it wasn't official yet. And so we had to go back and forth with USCF and said, "Well, the horses have done the victory pass. It's been announced in the ring. If the shoes, are, if they're over uh, legal." you're not going to announce it in the center ring saying, you know, we yeah. took the ribbons back. So it was a lot of, a lot of conversation with the USCF to get, us, get them to allow us to do it at the uh, exit gate mm -hmm. at New England. So um, how, then we got more into doing lots more advertising, and Oklahoma has become a really big deal. Um, tell me a little bit about what Oklahoma has become in live streaming. So I think it was in 2013, um, the original uh, live stream provider, uh, that did Oklahoma and New England um, uh, decided to go another direction. Um, so I was working with uh, Mark Case of New England at the time and said, hey, let me see if I can help you out. I'll take care of the live streaming uh, this year. And um, we teamed up uh, with uh, Seahorse Video, and I think you were there as well. Uh, we threw in live commentary, which had uh, not been done in the Morgan uh, shows before. And Conky joined us as well. And um, 
Uh, we did commentary and then uh, working closely with uh, Tony Lee. Uh, we partnered with Oklahoma that year to bring them uh, uh, some in-depth barn interviews, the one-hour pre-show, um, and uh, just in-depth interviews outside of the show ring. Yeah. Uh, and added a little extra on top of just the live streaming that was happening inside the ring. Yeah, kind of made it so people at home got a feel of what's really happening outside of the ring, not just in the ring. Yeah. Well, I think that's the beauty of what Horseshow Wire does. The backstories people love, and uh, for example, when Larry Bolin would come on, and and uh, oh, you know, Peggy Clark and uh, Harry. Oh, I just tear up when I think you know we had some wonderful interviews with Harry, and it gives it that extra dimension. And then I also really enjoyed the you know the outgain interviews because people are just over the moon. They've just won, and it's the you know there's energy on several levels, and I think the extra dimension of a video really brings it home to you know the people over the live stream that, that can't be at the horse show or they can preserve it and they can watch it over and over again so it's a great idea I thank you You're welcome. <laughs> I was talking to friends of ours that uh, I've grown up with and, and she won a uh, class Western class in 2013 and we did uh, an after class interview a little red carpet interview and she said she still watches it two years later I mean that's kind of cool yep yeah. yep pretty cool yeah. Yeah, and um, I think you guys interviewed Sandy Sussink the first year we were doing it, and uh, you did commentary over the equitation class. Uh, she got home, and a, a girl who lives in her area saw the interview, called her, and bought a horse through her because of the interview, and is still a client of hers today. Wow, I didn't know that. That's pretty impressive. Well, and then the year at Oklahoma, or, I'm sorry, at New England when we had Facebook Live, I think it was the second year when you made it happen in real time. It was so much fun at, at answering people's questions, and I think one year here we had someone from Australia that said, you know, that, that spoke to us on Facebook and in real time and said, you know, I'm in Australia and this is just terrific and thank you so much. And, and they asked some questions and they said, could you please ask the equitation person or the hunter person mm -hmm. about this particular thing? And we did and we answered them on Facebook. So it has a wonderful dimension. It really does. And so now I've been getting questions about the live stream this year. So can you explain to me what, what's the format for the live stream this year and like our, spawn, our, uh, our hosts and our um, partners that we have for Horse Wire this year? Sure. Um, so as you know, the last two years, uh, we've, uh, our last three years, we've been doing the live streaming. Um, we've gone after and tried to get uh, partners uh, to uh, come forward and help. Uh, we sell their commercials on air and to help pay for some of this. But unfortunately, um, this, all the extra uh, uh, interviews that you see, everything outside the ring that you see adds another dimension and extra cost to the show, uh, along with having multi-cameras in the ring switching back and forth where we're just not following one horse around the ring. You, you have to hire uh, uh, staff to do that, plus you have to pay their travel expenses to get here. I think for between us and Richfield here at this show, we probably have 40 staff members uh, that had to travel in. Uh, that's, that's salary, that's hotel, that's airfare, that's rental cars, that's uh, food expenses. And then we're paying for the bandwidth and you're paying for uh, camera equipment and uh, shipping the equipment. We're north of fifty to $100,000 to put on a production like this. We, we, behind us, you see the sign for um, some of our partners that stepped up again this year. Uh, we sell uh, commercial spots with banners starting at three hundred. dollars most expensive spot you can buy is uh, $5,000. Uh, not many people step up at that level. Um, we had um, approximately 15 uh, sponsors, or not sponsors, but partners come back this year. It didn't begin to cover the fifty to hundred thousand dollar north cost. So there's still a difference between what we can raise commercially through advertising and what it actually costs to do this. In the past, in the past two years, the shows have uh, made up the deficit. They can't do it any longer. So we had to come up with a different solution. Because sponsors, uh, I was talking to uh, uh, Sally Wadhams, and she was telling me that you know they they are year-round looking for sponsors for this horse right. show. And if they don't have sponsors, they can't put on the show. Right. So our sponsors, we have to tap into their sponsors, so it, it helps. Same people yeah, over and over. Exactly. Yeah. And people get tired of ask, being asked for money all the time, so you know it's another way to help subsidize. 
Well, and then those of us, for example, you know, I've got two projects that I'm working on, you know, raising funding. One is for a um, handicap riding program that has a little mare who has a, a cancer lesion on, on one of her eyes. And to do the surgery at the University of Florida is going to be $3,500. And so, you know, we're trying to put together fundraising for that. And then uh, we've got another gal that competes in carriage driving, and she's shown here, Susie Stafford, and she's going to uh, Austria and, and represent the world with a Morgan mare, and she is top, 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 and could easily be an ambassador for the United States and for Morgans, and it costs her 35000 to go over. So, you know, the horse business is it's just, it's just expensive, but... There are wonderful, generous people who support it, and we love you. Thank you. And, and in no way do we not appreciate everything that's happened. All people that do everything for us, spawn, uh, the partners and the people that pay for the live stream, it's like, you know, we really appreciate it. Right. Uh, and back to the sponsor uh, uh, topic, Caleb and I were filming the AMHA town meeting earlier today, and Mark Stenke came up with a, a very good point about sponsorships and becoming involved with the Morgan breed. Um, a, a lot of people, and it, it, it's not right or wrong, uh, they're able to attend a show and show and go home and they have busy lives, but there, it takes volunteers to put on the show to get sponsorships. If you uh, just paid your entry fees and showed up at the show, the shows, there would be no way the shows could have a horse show. Um, they did a study in uh, one of the Midwest shows. If they uh, took away all the show sponsorships, this was just a standard Class A show, and just uh, uh, started charging back, broke even, based on entry fees, entry fee per class at a Class A show would be $700 without, without the sponsorships. So it's the same people over and over that the shows are going after, but if they didn't, we, we wouldn't be here today. The moral of the story is, we do really appreciate everything that's happening, and and I'm and it's really exciting just to be a part of something that's new and different. People really appreciate because they can look back and say, "Hey, you know what they did was really special." That interview that they do with Harry Sebring, we've done a bunch of interviews with Harry Sebring, and now we can replay back and victory passes and so many memories. Uh, we started doing best performance in 2011. Um, the, uh, we've had four winners here at Oklahoma. Um, this year we're putting a, a little different spin on it where. Uh, you vote during the week here at Oklahoma for your favorite performance here. Uh, we're going to announce the top 25 Saturday evening after the last class. Uh, then they can go. Uh, then they can go to our e-magazine that's coming out the 15th of November and vote for the best performance of the year based on the top 25 from Oklahoma. Uh, December 1st, we'll award uh, the best performance and a check for $1,000. And all this is done through Horseshowwire.com, right? Okay. So we, um, people with, you know, the horses need to rah-rah the troops and the troops to get online and first nominate the horse and then get behind the horse and have the votes come in like Dancing with the Stars, et cetera, et cetera. So this is our reality show for, for Horse Show Wire. It, it doesn't have to be a show horse either. It could be any division. That any could... division here at Oklahoma, any division, any rider, Eck rider, um, reigning, over, over jumps, dressage, whoever gets the, the most votes. So, I mean, go to horseshowwire.com and put in your votes. Someone stopped me earlier and was like, no, I think they're asking me a little bit about it. And they're like, should I put it, put it, my horse in for best performance? I was like, of course. I was like, you have nothing to lose and you have only something to gain. Yeah. A thousand bucks. That's not bad. So you guys kick off championship weekend today. Yeah. yeah. We were in the barns and the makeup rings and we were rah, rah, welcome to championship weekend. And people are very, very excited. It's just going to be spectacular. It really is. It's good to be here. It's good to be with friends and family. And uh, and the theme of this week that talking to everybody is, is homecoming, you yeah. know, and it's yeah. it's real special and a special place to be. And I feel sorry for people that are home because they're really missing out this week. It's. I'm glad to be here. I love you guys. <laughs> Thank you, Conky. Thank you. All right. So um, enjoy the rest of the weekend. And uh, thanks fun. for listening. Yeah, have fun. Thank you. Yay.
there. It's that time of year again. They have the best performance of the show. It's pretty exciting stuff. I'm super excited, and I'm super excited to see what people are going to vote and put in as the best performance. And then November 15th, we have our yearly best performance e-magazine that comes out, and voting starts for the real best performance November 15th through December 1st. And then the winner on December 1st will be announced, and how much money are they going to win? They win $1,000. That's pretty exciting. That's pretty cool. So casting votes, you can, might be able to win a grand. And if you think a horse can win, do it. I would want to win $1,000, wouldn't you? Yeah, I definitely would. So get your friends on uh, and start voting. And if you're top 25, you're in the running for the, for the money. The Morgan Weenling Gala. Showcasing the future of our Morgan breed. The only event in the nation focused on weanlings, their sires, and their breeders. With the largest single class payout in the Morgan world, history has proven the Morgan Weanling Gala showcases not only the top weanlings, but also the show ring and breeding stars of the future. And now, you can join these great stallions as we look to the future. Be a part of the Morgan Weanling Gala. So I'm here with Howie Schatzberg, our horse show photographer extraordinaire, and uh, welcome to the show. Thank you. Always happy to be here. Another year. Another year. Howie, tell me a little bit about your story. How did you get started in the, in the horse business and everything? Well, uh, my father, Jack, who everyone knows, uh, did this show before I did, uh, working for him as a young kid, running film in and out of the darkroom. Been doing it since I was 14 years old, so uh, over 40 years doing the horse shows, and it's, it's been great. It's been a great ride. So what do you like the most about doing what you do? Uh, I like the people, especially the Morgan people. I mean, it's just, it's like family. Uh, you know, all the experiences, people go in the ring, they win for the first time, or they've won many times, and it just, it, it, it's just a great atmosphere. I like to see the happy people, and, uh, you know, I'm a people person, so it's, it goes great for my my thinking. I could never guess that was the people. Yeah, right. <laughs> I hear you. Because you're like a staple in the in the Morgan community for sure. And I, whenever anybody talks about you, they speak so highly. Well, I'm flattered. I mean, I, I again, I have a good time. You know, I speak from the heart, and you know, it just it's it's very fortunate. Very happy to be here. That's great. So, what do you like the most about being in OKC? Uh, you know, it, it it's predictably unpredictable. Can over 30 years, 31 years, something like that, and it's just like. Everything is so solid. The committee is amazing. Uh, incredible hospitality. You know, the, what can we do to help you? Uh, what can we do for you? Uh, is everything okay? Very few shows do that these days, so it's it's pretty special. And if any of these exhibitors go to other shows, uh, they realize when they come here again, everything's they know where to go, know where to meet, uh, know what to do. So it's that's a really a beneficial thing at horse shows these days. And also, I mean, you can't do the show by yourself. So tell me about your crew that you have. Oh, my crew's a mess. I mean, uh, they're the worst. But I, I still love them and they're family, so I can't fire them. Yeah. But, uh, no, I, I have the best crew. There's no doubt. You know, it's, I'm just one person, so I, I don't do it all. I can't do it all. Um, from I can't, my sister, my wife, you know, everybody. They all do a great job. They've been here forever. So, I, you know, I wouldn't be here without my crew, obviously. I was in uh, Deerfield Fair up in Deerfield, New Hampshire last week, and John McCarthy was up there shooting. I was like, I was like, you must have just got, he must have drove from oh, New Hampshire here, straight here. He's the marathon man. He does it all for sure. And he's, again, just like everybody else, he's amazingly reliable. Uh, Richard Rosenheim designed my whole system, been a friend forever. Uh, it's just, it's great. I have a great crew. You know, Jason Mulbach, Rachel Kelly's here this year, incredible photographer, Ken Martin. Uh, who am I forgetting? Jane King, who's doing all the photos here. Uh, I, again, I'm a small part of the cog. So. I saw your dad taking some shots in the, over in dressage yesterday. Oh, yeah. He tells me when he's coming and when he's not coming. So I have no control of my father, and everyone knows that. He's his own man, and uh, he is definitely the man. So he's incredible. <laughs> That's hilarious. So say if somebody wants to do a farm shoot or a horse show, I'm sure you're solid, book solid, but say someone wants to get in contact with you, how would they do that? Just go to my website, howardchatsburg.com, or just call me. You know, I'll give anybody my cell phone number. Um, you know, I've been, people say, well, you don't want to do this show or this, that show. It's untrue. I love all horse shows. If I'm available, I'm there. So uh, I, I still love it. still have a lot of passion. And, you know, I'm a young guy, so I'm ready to roll still. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. hey, thank you so much for talking to us. Thanks for having
it's there. It's that time of year again. They have the best performance of the show. It's pretty exciting stuff. I'm super excited, and I'm super excited to see what people are going to vote and put in as the best performance. And then November 15th, we have our yearly best performance e-magazine that comes out, and voting starts for the real best performance, November 15th through December 1st. And then the winner on December 1st will be announced, and how much money are they going to win? They win $1,000. That's pretty exciting. That's pretty cool. So casting votes, you can, might be able to win a grand. And if you think a horse can win, do it. I would want to win $1,000, wouldn't you? Yeah, I definitely would. So get your friends on uh, and start voting. And if you're top 25, you're in the running for the, for the money. So I'm here with Vern from Cannabar Farm. Um, tell us a little bit about your barn. Our, uh, we have a small breeding and show operation in uh, Lacombe, Alberta, Canada. And Lacombe is between Edmonton and Calgary in uh, central Alberta region. We have about four brood mares and we raise one or two foals a year. And uh, usually about the time they're three, we try to bring them to Oklahoma to, sh to show in the fraternities. Uh, we've been coming to um, the Grand National for about 20 years. We haven't missed a year. My wife, Anne, is uh, the chairman of the awards committee for uh, the Grand National. This year, we have uh, one mare that we brought with us to show in Western Pleasure. And uh, with us, we have uh, Sherry Groot and her son, Brady, who are showing uh, Cannabar Masquerade, who is a mare that we bred and sold to them, and they're doing very well as, as well. Tell us a little about your history and how you got involved with Morgan. Both my wife and I, Anne, and I work for Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada, and we have very busy jobs. And so Anne decided that we needed a hobby and that that would be something to do with horses. And so she brought a mare, and uh, we... Um, immediately started to get involved with the Alberta Morgan Horse Club, which meant showing, and I had been raised with horses, and so I knew a little bit about them. And so she began to get involved in the operations of the club, and I started to show horses in um, Western Pleasure. And um, we work with Darlene Brower, who has trained with us for about 20 years, and um, uh, We've uh, managed to bring horses here and place in the paternities and in uh, the Western Pleasure classes and some reigning over the years. Now you've talked about breeding. Um, what do you look for in a stallion or a mare to breed to? We look for um, uh, a stallion and a mare. Uh, first of all, we have mares, so um, uh, we're interested in a particular type. We, we like pretty heads, necks, and and uh, good form to function. And uh, then we try to match stallions uh, that complement those mares. And we've never owned a stallion. We've always used artificial insemination 
with frozen or fresh cooled semen that we brought from the United States, mostly through contacts that we made at the Grand National Show. And so we look for a, a very calm dispositioned horse because that's what we want in Western pleasure and the Western disciplines. We want them to be athletic, we want them to be pretty, and we want them so that they will uh, disposition so that they will produce horses that amateurs like myself can show. Um, and what are the types of horse shows that you attend in Canada? In Canada we have the Morgan shows. We have about a show a month beginning in about May through to September and uh, more and more we have multi-breed shows that includes uh, Morgan, Saddlebreds and Arabs mostly and we'll have shows that have somewhere between 80 and 120 horses at each show. The Alberta Morgan Horse Show, final show of the year, is always on the, our long weekend in September. This year we had about 120 horses at that show. And you said you've been coming to Oklahoma for 20 years now. What do you love so much about this show? Grand National Horse Show is the Super Bowl of, uh, of Morgan events. It's where you can compare your horses to the best Morgan horses that are around in North America. And it's a level of competition that we have here. And over the years, we've met a lot of people and there's a lot of camaraderie. We know a lot of people. We treat it as a, a holiday each year. And so this year, we will have been at the Grand National for about two weeks. And it's become part of our annual pattern of our, our, our lifestyle is to come to the, the Grand National Horse Show. Well, thank you so much for speaking with us and good luck the rest of the week. Thank you very much. The Morgan Weenling Gala, showcasing the future of our Morgan breed. The only event in the nation focused on weanlings, their sires, and their breeders. With the largest single class payout in the Morgan world, history has proven the Morgan Weenling Gala showcases not only the top weanlings, but also the show ring and breeding stars of the future. And now, you can join these great stallions as we look to the future. Be a part of the Morgan Weenling Gala. So I'm here with Katie Hodges, who is uh, I've grown up riding horses with and has a new position with the AMHA. Katie, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So tell me a little bit about this new position that you have. So I will be AMHA's customer relations coordinator, and I will be working with members for recruitment and retention, and I will also be 
working a lot with the youth groups, um, the youth council and the youth advisory council, doing some other programs like the Pathways program and open competition, and I'm learning, looking forward to learning more about everything AMHA has to offer. You started? Is it started yet? or? No, I start on Monday right after the show. I will be judging the youth speech contest on Thursday, so I'll pretty much start tomorrow, but I'll be in the office on Monday. I know where you've been growing up with horses, but tell everybody else like your story. So I started riding with Judy Nason. Um, I had a Boria Ben-Hur, a Hunter, and then I we bought Dragon's Mead Warlock with the Morgan Horse Farm and spent some time there with him, and now Ben Harrison and Spirit, my new mare, Spirit of the Heart, are all together with me at Cedar Spring Farm, which is great. They're 15 minutes from my apartment in Burlington, Vermont, and five minutes away from the new office where AMHA is. That's really cool. That works out really nicely. Yeah, everything's all together. Are you showing here this week? I am. I showed the last three days, and I have the classic Pleasure Saddle Ladies Championship Saturday morning. That's awesome. So tell me, why do you love the Morgan so much? And, why, and what does it mean to be able to work for the, the Morgan horse? It's a thrill to be able to work for them. I mean, I grew up riding and showing Morgan, so to now learn more about AMHA and to meet some of the people who aren't showing and to get a more broad view of Morgan's is really exciting. Really excited to see somebody, some fresh young people getting involved in the Morgan breed, and it's gonna be awesome. Looking forward to the future. Thanks so much. <laughs>Morgan Weenling Gala, showcasing the future of our Morgan breed. The only event in the nation focused on weanlings, their sires, and their breeders. With the largest single class payout in the Morgan world, history has proven the Morgan Weenling Gala showcases not only the top weanlings, but also the show ring and breeding stars of the future. And now, you can join these great stallions as we look to the future. Be a part of the Morgan Weenling Gala.
Sarah, it's that time of year again. They have the best performance of the show. It's pretty exciting stuff. I'm super excited, and I'm super excited to see what people are going to vote and put in as the best performance. Yeah, definitely. And we have some victory paths for you guys at home, and um, people have already cast votes for these horses that you're seeing on the screen here in a little bit. So that's pretty cool already. People are already voting. It's a big deal. And people can do that. They can put in their nominations for the horses up until Saturday as well. And then Saturday night, they're going to announce the top 25. And then November 15th, we have our yearly best performance e-magazine that comes out. And voting starts for the real best performance, November 15th through December 1st. And then the winner on December 1st will be announced. And how much money are they going to win? They win $1,000. That's pretty exciting. That's pretty cool. So casting votes, you can, might be able to win a grand. And uh, I think that's pretty awesome. So if you think a horse can win and you can get people to vote, do it. Because, you know, it, it's definitely worth it. I would want to win $1,000, wouldn't you? Yeah, I definitely would. So get your friends on uh, and start voting. And if you're top 25, you're in the running for th through the money. Mathis Brothers has something for everyone, no matter where you're at in life. Whether you're moving to college, starting a family, or when you finally build that dream home, you'll find the complete range of price points and styles and in every category. Many of our customers are second and third generation because the relationship we build with you and your family lasts a lifetime. The largest selection, the best value from our family to yours for over 50 years. Only at Mathis Brothers, guaranteed. It must be championship weekend. Yes, it Conky's is. here. It's so Get ready, everybody. It's going to be great. Can't wait. Yay, championship, championship weekend. Championship weekend. Yay. 
And the belle of the ball, Bella Bella Hufford, is going to wear the roses in whatever. What are you going in this weekend? I won't. Well, I have the Junior Western Pleasure Class. There yes. you go. There we go. Okay. We're going we're we're to be cheering for we're you. We're going to work hard. Good try. job, baby. Yay! Championship weekend! Woohoo! Welcome to Championship Weekend. Welcome to Championship, Championship weekend, weekend at the Grand National. I don't know about you, Nick, but what I like best is the potential to win. <laughs> Welcome to the Championship Weekend, and we are looking so forward to all the fabulous horses and riders from all around the country. Hey, welcome to Championship Weekend. I'm so excited to see how this weekend comes together. It's been an awesome week of competition, and this, all the championships seem like they're wide open, and everybody thinks going to just come back for everything. So I'm excited. Welcome to Championship Weekend! Championship Weekend with Miss Kitty. What do we like the best about being here? I think it's seeing all of our friends and all these wonderful horses. Have a great show, everyone. Welcome to Championship Weekend. Welcome to Championship Weekend. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Outtake, outtake. <laughs> there we go. We're back in action. All right, good, that, good. That was fabulous. All right.